Hey, how's it going? Today's video, we're going to be talking about a piece of history in this old Gibson and how I use this guitar to help me in my songwriting. So let's talk about this guitar right here. This is a 1939 Gibson L50 that I picked up in 2018 um, in Tulsa, Oklahoma at the Guitar House of Tulsa. They had a vintage and rare shop at the time and I had been kind of looking around um, at the different shops I was going to um, kind of throughout that year um, just looking for a old Gibson Sunburst um, arch top and part of that is because when I was growing up we had a Harmony um, that is like early 60s um, really cheap um, but it was you know F hole 16 inch um, hollow body guitar and there was just something really cool about that to me as a kid um, it eventually got stepped on and crushed and um, yeah, it was it was kind of abused, but I had just this attraction to that guitar, and I had played several different arch tops throughout the years. And what I really liked was the mid range characteristic and how they fell. And there was just something that was still really like sentimental and attractive to me about the sunburst, um, you know, old Gibsons because of that harmony that I had as a kid. So I went to a bunch of shops um, and played different late 30s, early 40s, L50s. Uh, I think the later 50s versions are probably the coolest looking um, because they've got you know your Les Paul trapezoid inlays, you've got binding on the body and the neck, you've got sometimes um, a bound headstock but usually not on the L50. There was um, a couple that were made like that but the reason why I ended up going for the L50 and ended up going earlier than those 1950s models and looking more in the 40s was because they were kind of bare bones um, and so they didn't have a lot of the cool accoutrement uh, you know they've just got dot inlays um, no binding on the neck at all and to me that you know that just put it in a price range it was a little more attainable um, and what I found was that's where you can get the great necks. And that's kind of where really the search was. I played a lot of them that sounded cool. Um, a lot of them are somewhat playable, but not totally, because what happens a lot is the end of the fretboard here starts to sink down uh, into the body, and usually you'll have a big dip in the front here. And so, you know, your action kind of stops somewhere between the seventh and the ninth fret. Um, None of these have truss rods, so um, I didn't want anything that really needed work. I wanted something that I could seriously play and not feel like I'm having to hold something really delicate. And like I said, the neck shapes on those earlier Gibsons were much more unpredictable, but there are some really amazing ones, which is what ended up convincing me to buy this one. I played several in that 38 to 42 range and some of them have v-shaped necks that are not even playable i mean it's like the corner of a table how sharp it is and some of them um, have you know slimmer more rounded necks it's just crazy how different they were but this one has the most perfect 50s huge baseball bat really round uh, kind of pronounced shoulders uh, neck shape and it is a hundred percent playable and so this guitar um, you know, it didn't need a neck reset or anything. I'm able to play in tune up to the 12th fret. And that was something that I really wanted. Um, you know, it needed to be fully functional. And this one was both fully functional and had, you know, the ideal neck shape that I was looking for. Um, and because it's so old and because the neck is so big, again, there's no truss rod here. So it is so stable. Um, the tuning stability is crazy for being an old Gibson. It just stays in tune well. I usually have it um, somewhere between, you know, a whole step down, half step down. <laughs> Uh, 
I just find that that's a little more comfortable to play. Um, in that lower tuning, it kind of fits the way the guitar sounds a little bit better, add some body to the low end. So the reason why I think that you should have something like this in your arsenal readily available, especially if you're a serious songwriter, a serious session musician, guitarist, being able to strip down what you're writing is so invaluable. Uh, I don't even know who to quote with this, but you know I've heard so many times that a song that can really stand on its own uh, can be able to just be played acoustically and not feel like it's lacking something. And I find that to be really true uh, if you're trying to write a good song as a whole. There are plenty of songs that I love um, that are amazing. They're fully driven by a sound, so whether it's like you're playing the effect uh, rather than you're playing the guitar, and that even goes beyond you know guitar sounds. There's plenty of songs that are piano driven um, that I really love but also are really rooted in the rhythm and all the other sounds that are happening and if they're stripped down um, may not hold um, as well as others. That's so cool, that's super valuable and it's something that I think is important to know though what your goal is. Um, and for me as a songwriter, especially if you're contracted to write, so it's not necessarily um, as a personal thing, it, per, writing personally, like, you know, sometimes we don't know what the song is going to end up as. Um, but, you know, writing professionally, being able to um, be in a group of people and achieve a goal um, and come out with melodies and lyrics, I think it's really valuable. Um, to have something to hold things against, you know, and hold songs against, um, to see if they can really stand on their own. And being able to strip everything down to like an acoustic guitar and vocals, um, that obviously might limit the genre, and that might be genre specific, um, and more on the pop and popular side of things. Um, but being able to have something that I'm really comfortable with, that I want to pick up, that I want to use as inspiration, that can also be the tool that I use to hold songs against, is why it's really valuable to me. Um, the mid-range in this guitar um, is really comfortable. It feels more like an electric, so I feel comfortable um, in a weird way playing electric licks and melodies um, on this guitar, as well as coming up with chord structures and dynamics, this guitar really achieves that. Um, and this is kind of getting pretty deep into the psychological side of it, um, but I think that it's valuable. I mean, that that's a part of it. I play this guitar different than I would play um, any of my other acoustic instruments. And knowing that and then using that um, to my advantage is something that I found valuable that I think is often overlooked. Um, and you know, knowing that a guitar makes you play a certain way, you can use that to your advantage. And so this is definitely not the guitar that I'm taking out anywhere. Um, I don't ever really track with this guitar, but its purpose is being able to really solidify a song idea. And so even if you think about great guitar songs, they can be played acoustically stripped down without lead guitar riffs um, and still hold their own. Um, there's plenty of great guitar songs that you can strip them down and you know what the song is, it puts you in emotional state, uh, but it stands on its own stripped down. <laughs> Thank you. 
So let's just hear this thing and I'll kind of explain to you the things that I really love about this guitar. So first, it's mid-range is just very sweet. It sounds really rich um, and full, but it's also smaller sounding, less scooped and full range is a typical acoustic guitar. It's really easy to play, um, and that sound, that mid-range, um, gives you a more intricate dynamic range. So it's maybe not as bold, um, but being able to really play into the dynamics um, and that sweet mid-range on this without being ever too bright, um, and so it doesn't sound too forward or too in front of your face, even just acoustically, is the thing that I find makes me want to play it. And it almost blurs the lines between an acoustic instrument and electric instrument just in its frequency range and the way it feels to play. Um, it's obviously feels different than like playing a Strat or my Parry Smith or a Les Paul or something. Um, but because of that mid-range, it really puts my head and my ears in this space to where I maybe... I'm okay with a little more space in the sound, um, and I'm okay with playing some more lead licks, especially as I write, um, and just knowing where it's going to fit in the mix of a song even when I do track with it sometimes. <laughs> And then being able to chord really fully. You know, I can still do the strummy strum, you know, acoustic thing and being able to hold that against a song that I've just written or a group of people that we've just finished, just having something that I know. This is a good test to how a song is going to be able to stand on its own aside from the sounds that you're getting and aside from all the intricacies of other instruments. Well, hopefully you learned something today and maybe it encouraged you to go and find your own old Gibson to be able to play and just think about the instruments that you have on hand and the ways that they make you play different, the ways that they put your head in a different space and being able to utilize that to your advantage as a songwriter, um, as an arranger, as you, you know, accompany somebody, as it's gonna sit into a mix. Um, these are all valuable things um, and ways to go about approaching songwriting and approaching um, attempting something musically. Just think about the way that the instrument makes you play. This is the kind of content that you enjoy. Um, if you wanna support me, please just follow this channel and share it, um, like and subscribe. Um, this is a new channel trying to grow and I uh, appreciate all of you who are interacting with me um, and check out my Instagram or you can go to my website colinlittlejohn.com uh, where you can find ways to book me um, to play remote session work, um, places you can go uh, to see me play out live and until next time I've been Colin. If you want really solidify, you know, it, it was, pro <clears throat> uh, so I, I've played, <clears throat> and part of the reason I believe that is because, okay, we need to. Okay. 
that really, okay. And part of, um, it's easily, I th okay, the Tulsa, it is, uh, 